That the moment Jesus dies on the cross and raises from the dead, he opens up the family of God, not to just include the Israelites, not just to include the Jews, but to include the entire world, whoever would believe in Jesus. And what these people were doing is they were kind of picking up this this requirement from the Old Testament and they were adding it into the new covenant. And they were saying, yeah, you gotta believe in Jesus, you need to have faith in Christ, but also you need to be circumcised. I mean, can you imagine going to that church? It'd be kind of crazy, right? Like you walk in the front doors, you've been there two or three times, and they're like, hey, I recognize you, you've been here a couple times. Um, Hey, you know, you've been coming a lot. Before we really go any further down this road, like, can we have a conversation just in the back room? Yeah, just come with us. You know, no, your wife is fine, she can stay, but just come with us. What is this knife for? Don't worry about that, just come on. You know, like, (laughs) it's crazy. Like you can't, it's, it's hard for us to imagine like really requiring this of people. But that's exactly what they were doing. And these are grown men, you know, that are converting to the faith and they're requiring that they be circumcised. Now, it's kind of a crazy concept and us to kind of wrap our minds around like that's something that really happened in history. But I want us to take a second and think about like what's really at the heart of that. These are people that are fascinated with an outward sign. What they're craving and what they want is a visual representation of what's happened in their heart. What they're looking for is really a way to check. They want to be able to know or see, hey, this person is following Jesus. They're they're kind of putting these obstacles in the way so that they can really prove their faith in Christ. And I think that's something we can relate to. A lot of times we wish we had a way to check. We wish we could really know who was really following Jesus. Or sometimes we just wish there was something that we could do to prove that. Like, hey, I really do love Jesus. I really am following God. Paul is kind of taking your eyes from all the things that he's done and all the things that these people are fascinated with of, man, he's had such a great life. He's done so many good things. He's really followed God. He's had such zeal for the church. And and man, he's done everything. And he's kind of taking your eyes and putting them on Jesus. He says, I count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own, but that which comes through faith in Christ. And it's at this moment that Paul kind of lands the plane. This idea that his righteousness does not come from himself, but it comes from Jesus. That's such a difficult thing for us to understand sometimes. So often we we get those things backwards. What we think is a lot like these, these guys that are requiring circumcision. We think, man, it it is my job to build the best man that might catch God's eye. We say, I I gotta gotta work on myself before I can come to Jesus. I wanna be as perfect as I can. I wanna fix all these things in my life. I I wanna kind of pay for the debt of my past and I wanna prepare myself for the future and I wanna kind of make my life as right as I can before Jesus is even gonna look my way. And what Paul says is the complete opposite. It's not that we do good works to be saved, but that all of that righteousness comes from Jesus. The first thing that happens, the first act of righteousness is not something that we do for Jesus, but it's something that Jesus does for us. It's for us to see Jesus and to call out to him, and in that moment, Jesus saves our soul, and then we live a life of righteousness because of that. We've talked about this over and over again over the past year, that we are not doing good works in order to be saved, but we are doing good works because we are saved. Because of what Jesus has done, we live with righteousness. 